Grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We greet you this morning from Greater Works Ministries with a great big hug, a happy Sunday, and just a great heart filled with joy to just be able to be in your presence one more time. Let's get ready to lift our hands and give God some praise and give him some worship.
Praise the Lord and greetings. I hope everyone is doing well, faring well during these holiday seasons and taking all your precautionary measures to protect yourselves and stay safe and keep wearing those masks and hope you had a great Thanksgiving and we're preparing now for uh, Christmas. Can you believe it? It's like four Fridays before Christmas already. Oh well, we're almost out of 2020 and marching quickly into 2021. Come on, get your Bibles. We're going to the Word of God. Seems like it's been a while since I've been here. I told Minister Annie, it seemed like I haven't been here in a long time. So much has been going on. We had made a plan to do our secret sister and we couldn't get the upload. We had so many things we were doing the porch, but we're still moving forward and we're still here. We're going to give you a word today from the Lord. Amen. Okay, so get your Bibles. Turn to Genesis chapter 12. We have a couple verses of scripture and uh, we just want to acknowledge all of our well-wishers, first-time viewers, people who are looking in. Uh, just know that we have Bible study on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You can come on here to the Vincent Fields web website. What is it? Vincent Fields. All the announcements will be out later on and you'll get it. But you can get a word. There's a library of information on either YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you can find us here and you can get you a word. Go back into archives and find something that can suit your need for where you are right now. Chapter 12 of Genesis. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. Let's see what the Lord has for us today. We're going to start reading at verse 1. Now in Haran, the Lord had said to Abram, go away from your country. And I'm reading it in the Amplified, okay? and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you abundantly and make your name great. It'll be exalted and distinguished. And you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. And I will bless and do good for you, benefit those who bless you. And I will curse, that is subject my wrath and judgment to the one who curses and dishonors and has contempt for you. And in all of the families, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. So Abraham departed in faithful obedience as the Lord had directed him. I'm going to stop right there. Go over to Genesis chapter 26 now. 26 and I'm going to read starting first one here. Now there was a famine in the land of Canaan besides the previous famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. So Isaac went to Gerah, to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land of which I tell you. Live temporarily as a resident in this land, and I will be with you and bless you, and I will favor you. For I will give all these lands to you and your descendants, and I will establish and carry out the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of the heavens, and I will give to your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants, by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham listened and obeyed my voice and consistently kept my charge, my commandment, and my statutes. So Isaac stayed in Gera. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go over one more scripture, and that's going to be over to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Turn right on over there, if you will. And the scripture reading in verse 8 and 9 and 10. By faith, Abraham, when he was called by God, obeyed by going to a place which he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as a foreigner in the promised land, as a strange land, living in tents, as a nomad with Isaac and Jacob, who were follow fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was waiting expectantly and confidently, looking forward to a city which foundations an eternal heavenly city whose architect and builder is God. 
Lord, do bless this word. Thank you, God, for we need an outpour of your spirit. Send it now. Send it now. We need it. We need it now. We need an outpour of your spirit. Mm. We need an outpour of your spirit. Send it down. Send it now. We need it. We need it now. We need it. We need it now. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and hopeful comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we start off in uh, Genesis chapter 12, and we see here that Abram's been given a commission. He's been told by God to get up from amongst your people, your family, your place of comfortability, your place of familiarity, your place where you know, and you can just by your own means and experience and just by the surroundings of you knowing, govern your own way. He said, I'm going to take you to a land that you don't know. I'm going to show you some things because I got a plan for you. I got a plan for your life. I, I want to make sure that you recognize that in my plan for you, that if you're willing and you're obedient by what I command and ask you to do, you're going to see not only yourself be blessed, not only your heritage and your ch children be blessed, but there's going to be a great nation that after your descendants have followed along with your plan as well, they're going to be the reason why the people will be blessed. People will be blessed. And so what I want to talk about is how we are waiting on the promise of God. Now, this uh, I entitled this the indeed blessing because he told him, he said, surely indeed I will bless you. He gave him um, this understanding that you'll be blessed because of your obedience. So he says here, get up and move. He was 75 years old when he left out of Haran to go to the place where God was taking him to, not knowing where he was going. Sometimes in our walk with God, we will find that the promises of God in him, yes, they are yea, and in him they are amen, but we don't always see and know everything that is going to have to pan out until we get to the place where he has taken us. Surely by the time they get to where they are going, you have had Jacob and Esau, and one stealing the birthright, and 20 years pass between them before they even reunited again, these two brothers. And so a lot had happened. Sarah had been told that she was going to have a child. A lot happened all in this time before they got to the place of promise. And sometimes even in our lives, we will find out that it doesn't just happen so speedily. There are a lot of immediate blessings. Yes, they are. But as long as the blessing is indeed the blessing that God said that he was going to do, that's what matters the most. And so we want to stay in the place of uh, expectation. He said he waited expectingly. He was obedient and waited for God. And we can be discouraged in a time like this because times like this looks like where is God and how come the things that we've been praying for aren't coming into our hands and how come it just looks like everything around us is in disarray and turmoil, a mess and upside down. But God said that indeed I will bless you. And if he promised, we know that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, He's going to do what he said he's going to do. Glory to God. This is the God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to trust God. Now, so here they are in the place of Canaan. Canaan today is the Syria, the West Bank, over by Gaza and Jordan. So it does still exist. So he says, when they left out of Canaan, he picked up, left out, took his nephew Lot, all of his family, his possessions, his servants, everything that he had acquired over there in that land, and he begins to move out 
when God called him to move. Tell somebody, move. When God say move, you move with him because you can miss the, the moment, miss the blessing, miss the hour that you're supposed to be able to be in line and in sync and lined up with what he is doing in our lives. So he said he moved. He took all the people and he left and he went and moved from there to a place by the mountain, which was east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent there, west side of Ai. And this is what I like about that. Ai means a place of ruins. Bethel means the house of God. He pitched his tent right there in the middle of it. Sometimes you might have to pitch your tent in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of a blessing, and just hang out in there and wait for God. It doesn't look like God is coming because all you can see are the ruins. All you can see is the side of Ai, depending on which way your tent is faced. But if you would keep your eyes focused on God, if you would look up to God and continuously believe Believe that what he said he's going to do, he is going to do it. You will continue to encourage yourself in the Lord like David had to do. So he pitched his tent right there in the midst of the house of God and the blessing place and the ruins that were surrounded all around him. And you know, we can be encouraged sometimes when God gives us instructions and tells us to move out. But in the midst of all of our transaction and moving and building and packing and all that you have to do to be in line with what he has said, when we see the disturbances, when we see the discouraging stuff, that's the stuff that can make you want to turn around like the children of Israel and go back to where the leeks and the onions were. You find yourself in a place of melancholy, right in a place where it could even look like confusion, in a place where it just looks like your back is against the wall and it doesn't even look like everything that God said he was going to do is even coming to pass but stay right there he told him he said stay right there stay right there where you are and see the salvation of the Lord glory to God hallelujah hallelujah so it says he went to Abimelech. Why did he go to Abimelech? Why would you go there? He's a polytheistic king serving all these gods. He was serving all these gods and he was called like the governor of the land, the father of kings of the land. That's because he didn't want to lose. Isaac went there to preserve his wealth, to preserve his cattle. He was there to try to keep all of his possessions and his wealth. He didn't want to lose out anything. But if God give you instructions and tell you what to do according to his plan, you're not not going to lose nothing and you don't have to fear losing material things. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the indeed blessing, indeed, is when the emphasis is put upon it. Indeed, when there's a, a point of a statement and putting some emphasis on what he said he was going to do for you. So here we are. He stays here. And as you begin to read on in the story, it says he told him that you're just going to live here temporarily. It's just a temporary thing that you're going through. It's just a temporary phase. You're going to come up out of this. Glory to God. <laughs> it may look like it's long, but I like how when you continue to read on in the scripture in verse, let me see here, in verse 10 of chapter 12, it says that he told him you're going to live there temporarily. But then when you turn over and get to eight, it says he was there for a long time. Mm, 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 mm. He was there for so long that he began to play and folly around with his wife because remember the story when the first story we read in 12, 12, he, Abraham, told his wife to lie because he was afraid that the people would kill him because of her beauty. So she told the lie and said she was a sister. Then when we get over, his son Isaac does the same thing with his wife and the same story, like deja vu, the same thing, just like a rerun, again reoccurs. So he said that it was a long time that he was there. But this is what I like about God. Whatever he says is a short time and temporary in his eyesight may seem like a long time to us. Oh, but he's not time bound. Glory to God. He said it's a temporary thing, so he's not looking at clock time. Hallelujah. When we look on the wall, we start counting by the clock time to see what the hour is. Oh, my God. But when he looks at it, he looks at the seasons that we are in. And he recognizes according to all that he has panned out for the seasons of the journey that we are taking with him, how he's going to bring us to each phase of it. Hey, my God, that might be four or five clock times. Glory to God. But he knows when he's bringing us out. And when he does, he brings us out on time. And you're always coming out on top. Clap your hands right there. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. 
He puts expiration dates on things to let you know when your season is up in a specific area and time for you to come out and move on. Tell somebody and move. Move with God. So there was a famine in the land. There was a famine. And famine just means geographical scarcity. Famine means extreme hunger. There are multiple reasons, if you will look in the dictionary, why famines occur. We know that they occur because of natural disasters, because of droughts, because of a food shortage, extreme cold, disease, insect infestation, plant disease, or just poor governing decisions. My God, my God, read your book and read your dictionary. Poor governing decisions as a result of what's going on. Mm, 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 mm. And when you consider all these things, when you look at all of the various famines that have occurred in our timeline, even in the 21st century, between the Chinese famine and the North Korean famine and the Ethiopian famine, there were over 40 million people who lost their lives. And many of the loss was due to the poor governance that happened. That's a whole nother story. But some things in our lives are inevitable. Some things are beyond our control. But then there are those things, as we look at the stories of the father and the son and how they both told the lie about their wife and they and say that you my sister and how we look like this instant replay all over again. Some things in our very own lives are instant replay. Oh my God. Some things we're going through in our lives is not because of the famine or the shortage, oh my God, in our lives pertaining to any other circumstance besides what maybe we have done. Mm -hmm. Some things in our lives is because we have patterned ourselves after some, some of the, um, some of the systemic or not even just that, but just life in itself. Glory to God. And it has caused us to have to go through the rerun and the instant replay over and over again, cycles and patterns that make us wonder why we're not coming out, why we're not winning and why we're not blessing with God and receiving the indeed blessing. Because God wants his people to be blessed. He wants to make sure that everything he promised to us in this book does manifest in our life. As we walk out this journey, we have a right to receive Everything that God said is ours, that belongs to us, according to the covenant of God. And so we ask ourselves today, what are we doing in the midst of these seasons in our lives? What are we doing? Change can make the mundane turn around. Change is something that if we don't realize and take a hold of and begin to use in our own lives, we'll be stuck in certain circumstances and situations. So it's okay to change. What do we do to change circumstances in our own lives to receive the blessings of God? We move with God. We have obedience. We do what he said here. He departed in faithful obedience. What is faithful obedience? Faithful, is a, faithful obedience is the kind of obedience that supersedes even your own thought process, your own ability, your own personal agenda to say, yes, I will, God, your way, your will be done. Faithful obedience is no matter what God says, we are willing to do what he says for him to get the glory and for us to be blessed and for us to live out this life so that in the fullness of time, when everything else is said and done, he will say unto us, well done, good and faithful servant. Faithful obedience is what moves God. And so because of it, Abraham was over in the hall of faith. Because of it, he was, after God called him out, he received all of the blessings that God told him he would give him. So God when we think about Jesus, actually, when he was, um, you, when you're reading over in your synoptic gospels, he always went for people who were working. Jesus always pulled out the tent maker. One was a tax collector. 
You know, they all had jobs. They were fishermen. They had jobs. He always made sure that he was surrounding himself with people that were movers and people that were shakers. The people that were sitting down on the sideline, sitting on the seat to do nothing, don't really get nothing because nothing comes to a dreamer but a dream. But you got to get up and move in this hour. You got to get up and you have to be willing to be bold enough to stand the things in your face that tell you you can't do it and that make you doubt that you are able to do it to say that it is not by my power, it is not by my might, but it's by the Spirit of God and it's by the power and the grace that he's given to me that I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I can do it. Yes, I can. Tell somebody move. Tell somebody move. If you want to get this indeed blessing that God has for you, you want to move. So Abraham moved. He did it. He was a, he was, he built an altar there. He began to give worship praise and prayer unto God. He was faithful to God. He settles down in here where the famine is to live temporarily in the land that God told him he was going to give him favor and blessing. Favor can buy you what money can. Sometimes we may not have money, but if we have the favor, it could be one person that God put in your pathway. It could be one person on a job or even anywhere, at a bus stop, anywhere, that God will have strategically placed in position to help you get to the place where he is calling you to. You know it's so many stories that you have had and you have heard about favor. I can't go over them all, but we all heard some testimonies, miraculous testimony. I remember one, Rance Allen, who just went home to be with the Lord. In his company, he was telling us one time at a um, conference, he said God told him to get up. He was going to go to preach at a specific location. He got his plane ticket, got there, but he got there too late, the plane left. He said, well, I know God told me, they, you know how they closed that gate. He said, he told me I was going there and they get here and I'm supposed to be here. And he asked and there was nothing they could do. He sat there and he was trying to figure out what is going to happen now. He said, all of a sudden he heard an announcement over the speaker that the pilot had to turn around and come back. <laughs> How many times have you ever heard that one? The pilot had to turn around and come back and land the plane. The plane, he was able to get on the plane and go fulfill the assignment of God. I never forgot that one. God can do anything. So the little small stuff that we're asking him for or the little things that we've been expecting or trusting him for, they seem big to us. They are small to God. They are small to God. He has promised us many, many things, and we have to believe it, and we have to remain faithful to expect those things to happen because it is your faith that helps to uh, ignite that fuel so that you can receive. It is the faith that we use that helps to generate the being of that. So we are grateful for that. In this walk with God, in this walk with God, sometimes you may have to leave the place of familiarity. You have to leave the place where you can, you know, run down the street and get an egg, I heard somebody say, from mom and them. To be able to trust God and to move out on the things that he wants to do in your life and the places he wants to take you. We're going to great heights. There are great things that have to be done in the kingdom in this hour. And he is calling his remnant and calling the people aside to get them prepared to go and do exploits. He said we would do exploits. And so you want to know in yourself that you are willing to sacrifice. You are willing to do whatever it is. It says I that here... Um, Abraham sowed seed in that land where he was because once he heard the blessing, once Abimelech and all of them, here it says, then Abimelech called Isaac and said, after he said that this is your wife and this, that, and the other, and you could have got us in trouble, he commanded all the people, whoever touched his wife, that they would be put to death. Then Isaac planted seed in that land as a farmer and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he had been planted for the Lord blessed and favored him. See, there is favor that God has for us. When we are aligned with the will of God, the purpose of God, the truth of God, doing the things that he pleased, that, he, that pleases him. Excuse me, I'm rushing. Let me slow down. I'm excited. Doing the things that please him. He's going to pour out that blessing. He already said it. So it's not for us to be discouraged in this hour. It's a very discouraging time, I know. We can look around and look like all the doom and gloom and all the terrible news, everything we hear. But this word of God, 
God does not lie. It doesn't lie. There is a transfer. Transfer meaning change. The significance of the change is what's important in this hour for us to be able to alter or replace, modify, or just allow something to become different in our lives. Sometimes we can get so stuck on the old mundane stuff, change makes the mundane go away. We can be so stuck on the routine and not talking about this pandemic, you know, of course you have to stay home and all that. That's a routine for us right now. But we're talking about the general side of our life, that when there is no pandemic, even in the midst of a pandemic, how you can be creative and how you can do what God is telling you to do. It doesn't have to be an excuse. Oh, I can't do nothing. I can't do this and that and the other, what have you, because it's a pandemic. You can still find ways through the Kratos creative anointing to be able to be used by God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what he promised, what he promised, it's not a man that can stop what God has promised in your life. It shall come to pass. As we look on here, as we look at the story, we see here that Esau and Jacob, we talked about that, how they had uh, contention amongst themselves because of the birthright. And Jacob went away and he stayed away and it was well over some 20 years before they decided to reunite and those brothers came back and saw each other again. And even at that point, he didn't know what his brother was going to do to him. So he had half of his family and his tribe on one side and half on the other in case he attacked him and all. But when his brother saw him, his brother fell on his neck and they embraced each other and they wept and they reunited and they joined back together and they cried and then it was all right. It was peace with them again. And so even in our lives, there have been long term, long time situations that have gone on and somewhere in there for us to find the peace and receive the blessings of God, just to have the peace of mind. We need to let some stuff go, let it go in our lives and move on. Tell your neighbor, move. It's time to move on. We just got to move past some stuff. We have to recognize the enemy where we see him trying to steal the blessing from us because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, there's a real thief out there. You know, he's real. He'll steal. He don't care who he steals from. He don't care the age. He doesn't care the gender. He doesn't care the, the uh, ethnicity because not race because we're all of the human race. We're all of the human race. So that's just something that they set up some experimentology to say about race. Because if a Ford truck is a Ford truck, it's a truck. And all the mechanisms on the inside is the same thing as the next truck next to it, even though they might be painted different colors. You have people of all ethnicities of all different colors. That doesn't mean that they it's a different race. We're all human race. We all have the same stuff on the inside. Same heart, same beat, same blood. And when you go to them blood banks, and if you need some blood tomorrow, they're not going to say, hold on, let me run over here and go find where the black blood bank is. No, O, A, B, all them blood types are the same types. Praise God. So they get off the race thing. It ain't race. We're all the human race, but we may be Polish, Jewish, Americans of African descent, European, Hispanic, you know, whatever that is. And all, even in all of that, Indian, everybody's different colors. Everybody like the Ford trucks, different colors. So stop the race thing. Praise God. Let's throw that one on in there. Praise that on in there. I think I'm finished. I really do think I'm finished. But nevertheless, I just wanted, and I approve this message. Praise God. I just wanted to say that um, the blessings of God are contingent upon obedience. The blessings of God. And yes, he said, I bless who I bless. I curse who, I'm, who I curse and all that. But the blessings of God for us who are believing and waiting for the promise to manifest in our lives are based on our faithfulness to him. They're blessed on listening because remember now, he had to hear God. Mm. He had to hear God and listen to God and then be willing to move when God said move. He had to be able to be in a place to hear God. Be in a place today to be able to hear God. Glory to God. Be in a place today to be able to receive what he says when he does speak. Be in a place not to try to weigh it all out and, oh, I rebuke you, devil, because you know God's voice. But will you submit to the authority of his voice when you hear it and he speaks to you for what you are to do next? Be in a place to be faithful with God and to hang in there 
in spite of the circumstance and what's going on around you. Hang on in there. Move when he says move. Walk with him. When he says stay, stay. Hallelujah. Because your blessings are right there. Hallelujah. So I'm just encouraged. Let's pray. Let's pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel like, you know, we just... Uh, we're so used to church and music and running around and all like that. You know, this is new for us. But hey, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your encouragement and even the simple reminders that you give unto us to continue to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. We thank you for faithful obedience today, for us being able to hear the voice of our shepherd. For you said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. We thank you that once you have given out those instructions to us and told us exactly what you expect of us, that we are willing with our heart and and give you a total yes. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. Oh God, not so much that we're always looking for something from you, looking for you to pass and hand out something, but because it is your purpose and plan and desire to bless us and because you set the motion and you're the ones who set the order and you're the one who said to move and get up and do and all, we're doing it to give you the glory and to allow you the time and the reason to purpose and purpose in our lives to bless us. So we receive your blessings. We receive your instructions. We thank you for your faithfulness, O oh God, unto us. For first it was you who was faithful, who even taught us the measure of what faithfulness meant. We thank you for the faith that each and every viewer has today to trust you in every circumstance. We thank you, Lord, that even those of us who've had to pitch our tent in the midst of ruin and between the house of God, Lord, that we are able to stand and then stand there some more with our loins girt about us with truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit of God, and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We thank you today that as we are waiting with great expectation that you are not a man that you should lie, neither the son of man that you should repent. We thank you that it is the father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We thank you that you made a covenant with us that you cannot alter and will not change the thing that spoke out of your mouth. Your word will go out and will do what you said it to do and it will not return into you void. Oh God, we praise you and thank you today for giving us a little bit more hope, giving us a little bit more peace of mind about all the things in all of our lives that we are trusting you for. Oh God, even when we can't trace you, we still have to trust you. And Father, we praise you today for we say that it is well with us. It is well with our family. It is well with our neighbors. It is well with our church, with our each and every single member, every family member, everyone represented, even those watching over the line today, oh God. We speak peace into those homes. We speak the blessings of Almighty God into their lives. We decree and declare the greatness of God be among them. We decree and declare that their children shall be great and do exploits. And even as this word said, that they will possess the gates of their enemies. We thank you that the devil is underneath of our feet today. We thank you that the, the shield of God swords off all of his fiery darts. Oh God, and we thank you that goodness and mercy is following us all the days of our lives. We thank you for the hedge of protection and the blood that covers us. Hallelujah. God, we say that it is greater than anything going on in the world, for the greater one abides on the inside of us. And we are looking, Lord, with great expectation. We are looking to you who is the author and the finisher of our life. We are looking, oh God, with our spiritual eyes to see what you're going to do in our lives and in this season. And with everything that we have within us, we give you a holy amen, a total praise, praise, worship, glory, victory. It is all yours, oh God. And we thank you for your portion that you bestow upon your people. In Jesus' name, we glorify you and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the Lord amen. Say, I'm moving with God. I'm moving. I'm going to be faithful, obedient. And when he says move, I'm going to move and do what he tells me to do so that I can receive that indeed blessing. It's now time for offering, if you could repeat after me. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, there's provision in my house. 
I'm a cheerful giver, a seed sower, and a harvest reaper. My harvest includes houses, lands, checks in the mail, open doors and promotions, business opportunities, money in my hands, debts canceled, inheritances, and more. My seed is physical and financial, so I expect a physical and a financial harvest. According to the Word of God, as long as there remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. So I give in faith, expecting my harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. You can also give your tithe and offering to Zell, and the handle is 562-659-4127. The handle for Cash App is Greater Works LA. And you can also send your tithing to P.O. Box 11744, Carson, California, 90749. Let's rest the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who gave, Lord, and those who couldn't. And we also thank you in advance, Lord, because we know you're going to provide. We thank you for using us in your kingdom, Lord, and we ask that you continue to use us so we can help those in agony and pain. We bless this offering now in Jesus' name. Amen.